but aid agencies have raised warnings over the deteriorating humanitarian situation in a country reliant on outside help. Even before the fighting, nearly 16 million people in Sudan were reliant on aid. Earlier, I spoke to Amar Amar, who is Chief of Communications and Advocacy at UNICEF's Middle East and North Africa Regional Office, and he told me more about the situation on the ground. Well, the situation in Sudan, as we have seen, is quite critical for all the people who are like uh, living in the areas of the clashes. Um, uh, the same for the our international staff who have been as well for the past days living as well in their homes. They have their families. And um, due to the intensity of the clashes, the fighting, you know, this was quite horrific and, and traumatizing. And it is the case as well for millions of Sudanese people who have been caught, caught in this fighting. Now, uh, as of yesterday, um, uh, the the um, as part of the UN um, relocation and evacuation, um, uh, the families as well and UN staff have relocated to Port Sudan and they were on their on, onward journey to neighboring countries where they will be working remotely. But some a critical as well, a team of of UNICEF will stay uh, to keep uh, working and providing support for the uh, Sudanese uh, people. You know, we have been working in Sudan for the past, for, for more than 72 years, and we are committed to support, you know, to continue supporting the Sudanese uh, people and Sudanese children during these difficult times. So um, we are staying there, we will be working with them, but it is critical, you know, during these very difficult times, these horrific times for the children of Sudan, that two uh, two issues are, are, are being, are, should be like looked into with, with immediate, you know, um, necessity and and seriousness, which is one humanitarian pose that will allow international organizations to be able to respond more effectively to the needs of the children and their families uh, uh, trapped in the, especially trapped in the in the fighting areas. Two, to allow these families as well to restock in terms of medications, in terms of water, in terms of food, which has been running really low. Okay. You know, it's nine days to the fighting, and the, there is there are no means for a lot of families to go out and to restock, and those who are injured as well to have access, you know, to health facilities or those who wish to leave the, the fighting areas as well to get the, the chance to do so. So lots of different issues there. Let me ask you first of all about those teams which uh, managed to get to Port Sudan. Um, it must have been quite a, a difficult and a dangerous task just to get those families um, to that port. Uh, they're presumably now on ships, are they? Yeah, they are being evacuated as being as we as we uh, as we are speaking. Yeah, that's correct. And they will be continued to, re to working remotely. Some of the team will remain in Port Sudan as well to steer the uh, relief operations for the Sudanese children. And their how families. difficult was it for them to even get to Port Sudan? Well, this this has been uh, organized under the you know the the, the auspice of the of the UN. All the measures have been set and worked out under the SRSG, the special representative team, and the and the uh, the uh, specialized teams in these evacuations. Of course, it was not easy. You know, we know with all the 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 um, with the situation on the ground, with the road, it takes a lot of time. So, but we are quite relieved as well that you know that they have made it safely and that they can or, uh, already with their families especially for the children, they can, you know, find some respite of this horrific experience that they have went through. But as well, we can only think, you know, about the situation of the Sudanese people who are still living in the same conditions, you know, and this is, yes. this is the real, the real issue here. It is like, there should be a, a humanitarian pose. There should be a ceasefire. We have seen like three or four. Now, I think the fifth one, uh, ceasefires that have been, you know, reached or agreed on. Most of these ceasefires have not been respected. And as such, you know, the situation for the families and the children, especially in Sudan, who have been like uh, going under huge stress trauma during the, due to the shelling, to the fighting, you know, physically and emotionally, those those people would need, you know, urgent help, not only as well, you know, um, in terms of, of, of you know, uh, assistance, food, uh, access to health, to medication, and sort of like, but as well, you know, emotional assistance, psycho, psycho, uh, psychosocial assistance to help them, you know, to cope with the stress that they have been enduring for the, for the uh, 
best nine days. Let me just ask you first of all about those teams that you have still inside Sudan. What are their circumstances? I mean, are they able to do the work that they're to do to try to help people? So far, you know, we, we, the the situation has been precarious. Of course, there has been challenges on the ground. You know, for the past nine days, um, none of the international organization could do their work effectively due to the scale of the fighting and intensity of the fighting. This is fire that were not like respected, you know, uh, the dangerous situation. So the teams are still there. Yes, in Port Sudan, we have a critical team that will remain there to steer the operations. We are beefing up the response. We are working on on the plans to be able to support the Sudanese people. But again, this is the, the key issue here. It is not about our capacity to respond and to mobilize. The key is the key issue here is when a humanitarian pose and if a humanitarian pose and a ceasefire will be reached and 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 withheld to be able you know to allow the humanitarian organizations and the UNICEF to be able to respond to the needs so this is this is the key key question that needs to be to be answered and to be uh, to be reached and we know that the current ceasefire is due to last for 72 hours how worried are you about uh, the millions of Sudanese people who are left in the country, many of whom were already suffering from deprivation, poverty, were dependent on food aid and humanitarian assistance even before the latest fighting began. We're extremely worried, as as you have rightly indicated, you know, the humanitarian situation was was like uh, alarming even before the, the fighting broke out. You know, 15.8 million people were already in need of a humanitarian assistance. Uh, of those 8.5 million children, more than 11 million uh, people were in need of water and sanitation services, you know, as the need for clean water. Uh, if we look at the malnutrition, Sudan has the highest malnutrition cases in, in the world, you know, more than 3 million uh, ch- children uh, who are malnutrition, more than 600,000 of those, you know, um, are severely acutely malnutrition. Out of those 50,000 who would need, you know, specialized care, and without this specialized care, you know, there, there is a high risk of them facing death, you know. And this specialized care m- means that, you know, therapeutic feeding in specialized centers, which are located in the fighting areas, and the services has been disrupted because of the fighting. So all of these circumstances are putting, you know, the lives of thousands of children at risk. And let's not forget as well about, for instance, vaccination. With the, the UNICEF has vaccination um, uh, storages in the in the country worth of 40 million uh, 40 million dollars and these are vaccinations for polio measles and 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 other other diseases and these are really critical you know and with the ongoing you know cuts of electricity or the lack of provision of fuel you know there's a huge risk you know if the fighting continues and the electricity you know goes off for a long period that these these uh, these vaccinations will be will be ruined and will not be used and thus putting as well the millions of lives of children at risk Emma, just let me ask you finally there has been a huge focus in the uk about getting uk citizens out of sudan out of khartoum and other areas that have been hit by the fighting but would you like to see more western nations doing more to help the millions of people who are still going to be living in the country and uh, quite apart from the risk of the violence um, face other huge challenges in their lives yeah th- this is this is critical i mean i think there should be a collective unified you know uh, approach we, uh, from all the countries who can influence, you know, to reach a ceasefire, to reach a humanitarian post, because seriously, the needs are massive. And, and the more time that it's taking, you know, to reach a genuine and, and ceasefire or kind of a uh, humanitarian post, this will mean, you know, more lives are lost, more children are losing their lives. So the situation is critical and more action from the international community is needed to make sure that, you know, we at least as the first, as, as first steps, you know, to respect the ceasefire and to allow for the international organizations to resume its operations uh, uh, in, in safety to respond to the critical needs. So this remains of essence. Well, that was Amar Amar, Chief of Communications and Advocacy at UNICEF's Middle East and North Africa Regional Office, speaking to me.